don't think it can happen to you. The hit and run chase in California, a motorcycle rider witnessing a driver slam into several cars and then speeding away. It can happen to you within seconds, a blink of an eye. Tonight about the man suspected of killing a woman in a hit and run and his plan to evade justice. When you take your eyes off the road for just seconds, when you're driving your car, oh, yes, it can happen to you. See, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. When the sands of time will run out within your hourglass. New at 10, a hit and run caught on video. And now a teenager and his family are looking for the driver who took off. He was a victim of a distracted driver hitting the road while riding his motorcycle going 65 miles per hour. He nearly lost his life. Now on a crusade to help save lives and prevent someone else from becoming a victim, the creator of DistractedDriversBusted.com and now the host of this podcast is Howard Drescher. Did you make it? Did you make it through the Halloween night? <laughs> With all the little ghosts and goblins out there and everything like that, did you end up making it through? Or were you one of those people that ended up turning off your lights? Well, unfortunately, I was at work, so therefore, my lights were off. But the big question is this. How many DUIs, how many hit and runs, and how many car crashes have we experienced last night? Or if you experienced anything within your own neighborhood like that. Oh, so I need to know. I'm your host, Howard Drescher. Welcome back to DistractedDriversBusted.com, the podcast show. You can get the shows on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Google Podcasts. And quite honestly, um, you can follow me on Twitter at DistractedDBTV, at DistractedDBTV, and of course on Facebook, DistractedDB. And I appreciate all the new followers that I keep getting more and more every week. So I appreciate that, and I appreciate everybody who goes to check out these podcast shows. I'm trying to just be more relaxed about these kind of shows, trying to be more realistic, knowing the fact that there are people that are going to be, well, quite honestly, not really paying attention. And we have quite a few examples of that today. As a matter of fact, just a little bit ago, because I'm recording this this morning, um... Yeah, November 1st, uh, recording this this morning, and quite honestly, uh, as I was walking up into my studios, I have uh, Channel 4, NBC on. Every now and then I flip from NBC 4 to KTLA Channel 5 here in Los Angeles. Uh, So I check out CBS 2 and and, uh, Fox 11. I uh, appreciate all those guys because every one of them has provided sound for me. But I was listening to, quite honestly, uh, Channel 4 and uh, the traffic. A lady was on the air. I forgot her name, so I don't want to. I think it's Robin Winston from NBC4. I didn't want to embarrass myself or embarrass her if I mispronounced her name or got the wrong lady. But she was talking about a deadly crash, a two- uh, two fatality crash that happened sometime around mm, one in the morning. So I know of two people that did not make it through and a crash that probably was totally preventable, if you know what I mean. All right, lots to get to, lots to get to, a lot of criminals coming across their, our airwaves here today. Uh, hopefully we can get to all of them. But I think it's kind of important that we just jump right into it. Uh, I was going to take a commercial break, but I think what we're going to do is just jump right into it. Can you imagine, if you will, being a teenager and waiting for your mother to pick you up and it doesn't happen and they end up finding out through the authorities that, unfortunately, your mother was killed in a car crash. 
And can you imagine, if you will, when the perpetrator ends up facing his time in court, his first statement is, I hate myself every day for this. Does he hate himself because he killed a young mother or was it because he got caught? Here's a story. News for J-A-K, J-A-X, News Jax, okay? And the initials, you can follow them at WJXT4. And I appreciate them for allowing me to use the sound. But quite honestly, to tell you the truth, it is just so disturbing that we end up having things like this happen over and over again. And yet we all know drinking and driving is not right. Being on drugs, being a distracted driver isn't right because you've got a 4,000-pound weapon in your hands. You're sitting behind the wheel. You're stepping on the accelerator. And craziness can happen. Again, this story comes from WJXT4, and I appreciate them for allowing me to use the sound. An emotional day in St. John's County as a man learns his fate after a DUI two years ago. My sentence you serve 41.0125 years on each count to run concurrent to each other. On the misdemeanor charge, I adjudicate you guilty and sentence you to time, sir. St. John's County judge sentenced Michael Rain to 41 years in prison. He pleaded no contest to a DUI crash that killed a man, injured his sister, and killed her unborn twins. It happened the day after Christmas in 2020. Rain was drunk that night as he drove the wrong way on County Road 207 and hit the victim's car head on. News for Jack's reporter Joe McLean was in the courtroom as this all unfolded and has this report on the emotional hearing. In Friday's sentencing hearing, it was a confrontation for which Raquel Haralambo has waited for almost two years, speaking face to face with the man who admitted to causing the drunk driving crash that killed her younger brother and her unborn twin girls. A powerful moment of overwhelming grief, anger, yet some absolution. But something I have to get off my heart is letting you know that I don't hate you. I want to, but I can't. Because God has told me to forgive. But I will never forget. Arlombo, who has lost the ability to have more children due to her injuries from the 2020 crash, was visibly crushed as she spoke to the man responsible. Now 33, Rain pleaded no contest to three counts of vehicular manslaughter and other charges, admitting to driving the wrong way on State Route 207 with double the legal limit of alcohol in his system. His truck slammed head-on into the car carrying her limbo, her two-year-old daughter, and her younger brother. In the courtroom Friday, Rain appeared broken, shedding tears for most of the sentencing hearing and offering a statement of remorse. I ask God every day, why was I not taken instead of the ones that were? Your Honor, I hate myself every day for the void that has been left for the one. Facing decades in prison, Rain also committed to spreading awareness about the dangers of drunk driving with any free years he has left. In closing arguments, Rain's attorney emphasized the remorse he showed and pleaded for leniency. Prosecutors, though, emphasized the choice Rain made to drink and drive that night and pointed to the lives lost, but also those changed forever, including her limbos. I ask you to take into account that the years Michael serves in prison will be shorter than any of their lives. When it came time to impose a sentence, Judge R. Lee Smith described Friday's as perhaps the most emotional and heart-wrenching hearing he'd seen. No matter what sentence I impose, no matter how long I put you in prison, <coughs> you are never going to escape the haunting memories of this incident the haunting and impactful words that were brought forth and statements that were made today. And that's the prison in and of itself, too. Rain was sentenced to 41 years for the nine total charges, including deadly DUI, vehicular homicide, and reckless driving. 
Now, at the end, just before handing down uh, the sentence, the judge did point out one of the most uh, stinging parts about this case, the fact that it was all avoidable. He said this should serve as a dark reminder of the dangers and just the, the detrimental effects to uh, intoxicated driving. Uh, meanwhile, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, now convicted um, man now has uh, 30 days to appeal his sentence. Reporting live, I'm Joe McLean, Channel 4, the local station. And again, I want to thank WJXT4 for allowing me to use the sound, but quite honestly, to tell you the truth, nine charges, double the limit, double the limit of alcohol within the body and going the wrong way. And again, he says, I hate myself every day for what he's done. Really? I mean, wasn't it maybe you hate yourself because you got caught? Eventually, they all end up getting caught. But to end up killing people. It is so, so sad. And it is very disheartening. It's like when I drive my car now, I'm, all, I'm always constantly looking. Who is behind me? Who is behind me? Are they speeding up? Are they getting closer to me. I try to change lanes if I see somebody speeding up really fast and stuff. It's just getting to the point where it's like very, very dangerous. And um, it's, it's just sad. It's just, I mean, where do we go from here? Where do we go? Do we need to maybe have public statements for these people that are getting sentenced. If you want a reality TV show, this would be the perfect one to have. You just line up each conviction and put it on the airwaves. You know, maybe that would get the message through. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But I do know one thing. Whatever's working right now is not working the way it should be. I'm just saying. It's just terrible. All right, you're listening to DistractedDriversBusted.com, the podcast show. When we come back, more people getting sentenced, plus we have a montage of the four worst DUI driver killers and their sentence and their reaction. We'll be back right after this. You are listening to the DistractedDrivers.com podcast. We'll be right back. Wake up and text. Text and eat. Mm -mm. Text and meet up with a friend you haven't seen in forever. Hi. Oh, hey. Text and complain that they're on their phone the whole time. (sighs) Text and listen to them complain that you're on your phone the whole time. Uh. Text and whatever. But when you get behind the wheel, give your phone to a passenger. Put it in the glove box. Just don't text and drive. Visit StopTextsStopRex.org. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. Papa, why can't we telegraph while riding a horse? Son, there ain't no one to blame but Jeffro. He was riding old Betsy the Stallion, tip-tapping away at his telegraph, when blam, ran right into the side of the saloon. Well, if Jeffro can't do it, neither should you. Don't text and drive. Visit StopTextStopRex.org. A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. Neil Armstrong waited six hours and 39 minutes to step onto the surface of the moon. Jackie Robinson waited 20 months to play his first game with the Brooklyn Dodgers. And even DiCaprio had to wait 22 years to win an Oscar. You can wait until your destination. Don't text and drive. Visit StopTextStopRex.org. A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. Now, back to the DistractedDrivers.com podcast. All right, welcome back to the DistractedDriversBuster.com podcast show. I'm your host, Howard Dresser, the creator of DistractedDriversBuster.com. And, of course, now this podcast. And you can follow me on Twitter at DistractedDBTV, at DistractedDBTV. And, of course, on Facebook, DistractedDB. And you can get the shows on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, and now 
Amazon. Just type in the keyword Distracted DB. Today, today's theme for this show is really DUI drivers that are getting sentenced and, of course, their reactions. Maybe something like this should be put into a reality TV show. So therefore, maybe, just maybe, people will start to get the point. Your thoughts on that? Yes, no, maybe, mm, not a good idea. You don't have to show really the, the victim's families or anything like that. I think it's just the sentencing part where hmm, you capture the reaction of the perpetrator after the judge imposes 41 years or a life sentence. And this is the reason why. Because you did this and you did that. And you know better. And it was all preventable. Just like the judge stated in the last story. It was all preventable. All of these are preventable. And quite honestly, people are just not getting the message. So, mm, that's so good. Here's a story from Kings 5. And it's up in Seattle. And you can follow them at Kings 5 Seattle. The TV station up there. And again, I appreciate them for allowing me to use the sound. And a man is convicted in a fatal DUI crash. And he's getting sentenced or slash re-sentenced for something. And let's just hear what this is. And again, this comes from... Kings 5 in Seattle, and I appreciate them for allowing me to use the sound. It's resentencing day for Robert Jackson Jr., the defendant who, joined by video, has a history with law enforcement that includes a mistake that came to light in 2015. That's when the state said, due to a computer miscalculation, the Department of Corrections released more than 3,000 offenders early. Jackson was one of them. He was let out of prison four months before he should have been, and for one family, what followed was grief. On November 11th, 2015, Robert Jackson killed my daughter and left her two young boys without a mother. Jane Noel says shortly after Jackson was released, he killed her daughter, Lindsay Hill, who was his girlfriend, in a drunk driving crash in Bellevue. Jackson was charged with vehicular homicide and hit and run. He was convicted, and it was Jackson's third strike, which meant life in prison without the possibility of parole. Having him in custody with no chance of parole gives me and my grandsons great comfort and a sense of closure. And now this. She's referring to a law that went into effect last year that calls for the resentencing of people incarcerated under the three strikes law if one of their strikes was second degree robbery with no weapon or injury. Right now, I'm asking the court to have mercy upon my life. Jackson was given time to address the court. They incarcerated a good man from an accident that was not intentional at all. And I'm sorry for it. And I'll be sorry for the rest of my life. After his apology, the judge handed down his decision. Instead of life in prison. So there's a total of 400 months. Jackson is now facing a 33-year sentence. Now, the victim's family said being here resurfaces terrible things for them, but they did make the decision to travel from out of state so their concerns about Jackson could be heard in court today. Live in Seattle, Natalie Swaby, King 5 News. And I want to thank Kings 5 News in Seattle for providing the sound. Uh, Are we getting a theme here? Are we starting to get the message here? It's all preventable. All of these are preventable. And quite honestly, I agree. And when we come back, we're going to have a quick montage. A quick montage of four drivers. Their reaction to getting sentenced. And some of them, quite honestly... Is it real remorse or is it fake? We'll be back right after this. You've been putting back a few, and a few becomes a few too many. For a moment, 
was thinking about calling for a ride. Nah, you live nearby. What's the worst that can happen? You get pulled over, your insurance goes up, you lose your license, you total your car. You kill someone. There's no way you can hide it. If you drive drunk, they're gonna find you. So stop kidding yourself. Sir, have you been drinking tonight? Sir, have you been drinking this evening? Sir, have you been drinking tonight? They will catch you and arrest you. Drive sober or get pulled over. Welcome back to PerspectiveDriversBusted.com, the podcast show. I'm your host, Alex Bustard, the creator of PerspectiveDriversBusted.com, and of course, now this podcast show. Again, you can follow me on Twitter at DistractedDBTV, at DistractedDBTV, and of course on Facebook, DistractedDB. And you can get the shows on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Google Podcasts, and Amazon. Just type in the keyword DistractedDB. Here is a story that I got from Core TV. And you can follow them at Court TV. And I definitely appreciate the sound. But we're dealing with a montage here of DUI drivers getting sentenced. And you can find it also under Court Moments. And again, I appreciate uh, at Court TV for providing the sound. And I want to thank them ahead of time. Uh... Yeah, this is some bad juju here. This is bad stuff that, quite honestly, is so disappointing that this kind of stuff happens. But here we go. People who decide to drive after drinking can end up destroying someone's life or taking it away altogether. That's exactly what happened in these cases. And now these drunk drivers have to face the consequences as they get sentenced for their crimes. Number four, Todd Gruzinski. Todd Gruzinski has been formally sentenced to life in prison for hitting and taking the life of 25-year-old Angela Wimmer while he was driving drunk. He is the only person convicted of the first-degree charge solely for a drunken driving crash and got the only sentence allowed under Colorado law, life in prison with no possibility of parole. Todd Gruzinski, 48 years old, spent the morning hitting at least three bars and downing nine shots of hard liquor and four beers before getting behind the wheel of his full-size pickup and plowing into Angela Wimmer as she sat at a red light. Wimmer suffered critical head injuries and passed away about two hours later at a hospital. And they kept saying all he wanted to do was go home. That's all Angela wanted to do. She didn't make it either. Grzynski's blood alcohol level was 0.341, a little more than an hour after the crash, more than four times the point at which a motorist is considered intoxicated under Colorado law. An investigation found that Gruzinski had been convicted of drinking and driving six previous times, in 2004 in Lakewood, in 2011 in Lakewood, and in 2017 in Jefferson County, where there was evidence he was drinking and driving, but no DUI charges were filed. A Jefferson County jury convicted him of the first-degree charge, as well as vehicular slaying, three counts of attempted first-degree attacking, and two counts of careless driving causing injury. Number three, Ivan Dimov. A Vacayville man was slain on Christmas Eve in a traffic collision in Sacramento. Antelope resident Ivan Dimov, 41 years old, was arrested in connection with the demise of Melvin Quan Strong, 28 years old. An officer tried to pull over a driver on suspicion of DUI, but the driver refused to pull over, slowed to 15 miles per hour, then sped away and turned off his headlights, according to a statement. A short time later, officers were notified of a crash at an intersection involving five vehicles, When officers arrived at the scene, they found the car they were trying to stop had reportedly caused a crash with four other vehicles. Officers say the suspect allegedly failed to stop at the stop sign and hit a vehicle. The car continued out of control and hit a parked vehicle, which then hit two more parked cars. Meanwhile, medics were called and officers attempted life-saving measures on the person who was severely injured. He was transported to a local hospital but succumbed to his injuries. That person eventually passed away and was identified as Melvin Strong of Vacayville. He is survived by his mother, Koana, and younger brother, Demiriel. Ivan Dimov got 15 years to life in prison for his crime. I know the plans that God has for you, 
And I know the plans that God has for me to do now. Kwani, my baby blue, mommy loves you so much. Surely, the blessing of God for us to have reached the verdict that we, that the judge had today. Number two, Lauren Freeman. Lauren Freeman, a Santee woman who fatally hit a man while driving drunk and on the wrong side of the road in a devastating 2018 crash, was sentenced to nearly 12 years in prison. Lauren Ashley Freeman pleaded guilty to gross vehicular slaying while intoxicated and DUI causing injury. Freeman was driving along Interstate 8, where the freeway intersects with Interstate 5. She was on the wrong side of the roadway with a blood alcohol concentration of 0.28, according to a plea agreement. Freeman was 22 at the time of the crash. It was just before 2 a.m. when Freeman and another woman inside a blue Toyota Camry collided with a Volkswagen Jetta. Inside the Jetta was 35-year-old Justin Callahan. Hours after the crash, California Highway Patrol officers confirmed Justin Callahan had passed away from his injuries. Freeman and her passengers sustained serious injuries, according to officials. Due to the position of the vehicles after the collision, CHP investigators initially believed the victim, Justin Callahan, was at fault. Justin Callahan's family quickly protested the claim, saying it just didn't make sense. Callahan's brother said the only scenario that makes sense was that Freeman was going the wrong way down the road. Months later, Freeman admitted she was responsible for the crash. America Callahan, Justin's mother, said she forgave Freeman but that the final judge is gone. Freeman was sentenced to 11 years and 8 months in prison. She has already served 379 days before her sentencing. I think this was the best outcome that we can achieve. In the circumstances that we're in, I, part of me wants to have her in prison for life for taking my brother because we'll never get him back. Number one, Sean Birchington. Sean Blitchington was convicted of getting behind the wheel drunk and driving the wrong way when he caused a crash that took the lives of Ryan Kennedy, 21 years old, Bailey McKnight, 22 years old, and their unborn child was sentenced to 60 years in prison. The girl who stole his heart and was already a member of our family not only lost my child, on his 21st birthday, I lost the girl he loved. But we loved her and her three-year-old son, Pagan, too. And our family was growing. A Nassau County jury had convicted the 48-year-old of DUI slaying, leaving the scene of the crash and driving on a permanently revoked driver's license. Addressing Blitchington, Circuit Judge James Daniel said, when you decided upon your own free will to drink alcohol to excess on July 22, 2018, and to get behind the wheel of your truck and proceed to drive the roads of Nassau County, you became a force of destruction with the power to bring indescribable devastation to whoever was unlucky enough to come across your path that evening. Birchington read an apology letter to the victim's families saying he was physically sick from the grief because of his actions and poor decisions. He also said he had a constant struggle with alcohol. It caused great pain and suffering in the lives of family, friends, and many loved ones. And all the pain, suffering, and burden caused by this accident. I'm very sorry for the death. Blitchington's older brother took the stand in addition to other family members, writing letters to offer their apologies and talking about how alcoholism runs in their family. Ryan Kennedy and Bailey McKnight's mothers gave impact statements before Daniel announced the sentence. Susie Kennedy said she feels like she passed away that night, but they forgot to bury her body. She added that all future cherished moments were stolen when her daughter passed away. She never got to plan a wedding or babysit their unborn grandson, Lawson. Their three-year-old son, Hayden, is being raised by McKnight's mother, Misty, who is regularly asked, are you sure mama is not coming home? It breaks my heart. Someone asked him to make a wish. He said he didn't want to because he knew it wouldn't come true. When asked what his wish was, why his wish wouldn't come true? He said, because my mama could never come home again. She asks me, Grammy, are you sure mama is never coming home? She said her grandson has had trouble eating and in school since the loss of his mother. Blitchington's attorney asked for the judge to show mercy with a 32 and a half year sentence and treatment to follow. State prosecutors had asked for a life sentence, saying Blitchington is a danger to the community who kept driving after five previous DUI arrests and having his license revoked. Even with good behavior, Blitchington will remain behind bars past his 90th birthday. You guys heard how many chances he had. He never once 
I'm just glad that he got the sentence he did. That's all for today's video. See you next time. Yo. Again, I want to thank At Court TV for allowing me to use the sound. It just goes to show you that there are people out there that feel like they're not getting it. They're not paying attention. And quite honestly, they never will. Something like this. If they listen to this, maybe, just maybe they'll get it. Until next week, remember, don't let anyone take the same of time within your own hourglass. Don't let anyone do that. And remember, do the right thing. Until next week, be safe.